So we had this event in Seattle, the event's follow-up, and it was Halloween night on Friday night, and my staff's got me a costume, and they're like, put the costume on. I'm like, I'm not wearing a costume on a Friday night you know, for Halloween. And then I kind of glance out, and I look at this whole student body, people from all over, and everybody's dressed up in all these amazing Halloween costumes. And I'm like, oh, bring that costume over right away. <laughs> at least bring the cape, you know? <laughs> and so Tom dressed up as the Swami what? Uh, the supernatural Swami. Okay, so here's the mic. Now, I want you to tell them the story of what happened to you in the pineal gland meditation okay. and your manifestation and how it happened and what your intent was and all of that stuff. And I'm okay. sure I'll interrupt you a few times. Okay. <laughs> so when I heard we had to dress up or it was voluntary, as your future self, Paula said, I thought about who I always wanted to be when I was young. And uh, ever since I was 16, 17, I wanted to be a swami. You and are a swami. I am a swami. So, <laughs> you know, I even left my hometown in Illinois to go study the yoga ashram in Connecticut. Everybody said I was nuts. Doesn't he look like a swami all of a sudden? <laughs> so, so I, I ordered this stuff on Amazon, of course, and I got used the old bed sheet for a turban and learned how to tie it. And I was in my hotel room. I didn't even want to come down. Got in the elevator, and here I am as a swami, trying to get this sheepish grin off my face. And uh, I go in there, and everyone's all excited, and people are dressed beautifully. It was a wonderful event. And little did I know we were going to all come up on stage, and we were going to receive a little gift. The gift was a key, and it was a key to our future self. So we start going through the process of learning about the pineal gland. And uh, I remember at one point in an elevator on the second day, I was in there with another woman. And we were both quiet, and uh, I said, how's it going? She goes, oh, it's going good. I said, really? She goes, no, nothing's happening. <laughs> and I said, you know, nothing's happening to me either. I'm, I'm used to these, how does it feel to be the genius? How does it feel moving that heart, moving that energy up? But I'm telling you, when Sunday morning hit, oh my God, it was incredible. <laughs> we start the meditation, things get going. We learn the four steps. Put your attention on your awareness on the pineal. Get inside the pineal. Radiate out and receive. So I got the attention. I get inside. I can locate it. I've got that proprio perception. perception. Mm -hmm. Got inside there. Start radiating out. And Joe says, talk to your future self and communicate. So I, I didn't know exactly what to do. And then he, must, he picks up everything. And he said to the crowd, don't visualize yourself, just sense and talk to your future self. So I start communicating to my future self silently and feeling it. And I flash to when I was 16, 17, 18. When you know that you can set the world on fire, of course you're a teenager, and, and you're going to change everything and you've got that burning sensation in your heart. The thymus gland is still open and you've got that love for life. I started to feel that. And I said, Tom, you can do it. Anything's possible. You got to believe. You believed when you were young and you knew it. You left your home to go do this and study this stuff. You believe. And then Joe says, now receive. So I noticed I was in the heart center by that point. I went up to the pineal gland. And I'm telling you, the energy came right in. I don't know from where. It shot up like turning a garden hose on with those air pockets in it. I was going like this, and the energy came up, and all of a sudden, I just shot straight. The energy came out through my body, out through my hands, through the center of my palms. My palms were face down. They lifted up like this. I was in an ecstatic, exalted state through the rest of the meditation. I don't know where I was. There was no vision, nothing, and it's going to be different for everybody. And when I came out of that, I was not the same person. So... Wait a second. Would you agree that that would be some pineal neurotransmitters doing that? Yes. Okay. So in my first mind movie, four workshops ago, I put in a picture. Oh, and another thing that's important too is when 
you think you're fearful and that's the emotion you want to release. There was a sponsoring emotion behind that fear and that was unworthiness. The reason I feared things was because I felt unworthy, whether it was ancestral, my parents, a traumatic event at 20 years old, whatever it was. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter, no. So I realized it was unworthiness. So in my first mind movie, I put a picture of gold coins and everybody wants wealth. But because I had this yoga, I gotta be poor, embrace poverty mentality that was left over from the past, dragging these dead mules around. <laughs> I decided I was gonna write, I'm worthy in so many ways. So I was gonna tie my worth, not to money, but to myself. Then in the mind movie that I made for Seattle, I put a Chinese character, symbol of wealth, but I put the word affluence because I never really wanted to be wealthy. That's never been my goal. But affluence, I looked up the word, and the root, Latin root, is to, to flow towards. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if everything you wanted would flow towards you? Are you, like, are you following this mind? Is he, he's like a child. It's just, he's, he, he's going through the process innocently and open to the experience. And of course, by him doing diligence, he's setting himself up for the next experience. Are you listening? And I remember Joe says, you have to build a model. You have to have it in place, the hardware for the software to run, for it to make it happen. So I thought affluence, yes, have things flow towards me. So after watching the mind movie, and then you put that image into that kaleidoscope, and I'm very analytical by nature, I'm able now to get into the subconscious, to get into the operating system, to bypass the analytical mind. And that must have happened when that worthiness, that worthiness got downloaded and I wasn't the same after, but I didn't know what it was. And I am convinced to this day that my DNA was rewritten, new information came in, and that old self is gone. I mean gone. So the workshop gets over. Oh, and I, I was giving somebody a ride to the airport and I had a town car and the and person said, can I ride with you? And they said, let me split it. I said, no, I got it, don't worry about it. I wasn't even afraid get back to Phoenix, go to my retail shop, open up on Monday. On Thursday, this woman comes in. She bought a futon, I have a futon shop. She bought a futon from me years ago. She comes in, she retired two years ago. She comes in every five, six weeks, just to chit chat about this and that. I don't always like to hear what people have to say. <laughs> be, be, because I, I, I don't want to download that, judge it, go to analytical. So I decided to start talking. So I would say to her, Sue, just because she have a thought doesn't make it real. And then I'd say, you know, your beliefs are just a bunch of thoughts you keep thinking over and over again. It's all a Joe stuff. She walks in on Thursday and said, I decided a couple weeks ago to make out my will. I'm retired now, I thought I'd make out my will. I want you to be executor. I said, oh, that's very nice, thank you, Sue. And uh, she said, here's the will. I said, thanks, and she said, look at it. I look at it, and not only am I the executor, she hands me a key. Now remember in Seattle, we got a key on stage. Hands me a key to her safety deposit box, which contains $110,000 in gold and silver coins, which matches the picture in my first mind movie, connected to worthiness. That happened in November. Was it worth the effort? Totally.